All right, uh, we are here in Austin, Texas. We just uh, wrapped a shoot that we did over the kind of the end of the week and the weekend. And what we thought we'd do today in the episode is something a little different, just talk about kind of lessons learned from this shoot. So tell us what you can, first of all, about the shoot. Oh, by the way, this is Carrie Judd. This is uh, the other Judd brother. Little and, brother. <laughs> and uh, we kind of, you were kind of mainly the DP, I would say, yeah. as more sound, mm -hmm. um, but we kind of shared the responsibilities. Tell us a little bit about the shoot. Well, um, well, the shoot was kind of confidential, so I can't talk about the subject of it. But um, so we were down here in Austin doing sort of documentary film style. Um, we had to do a bit of steady cam work and then some very long interview takes. Um, and we did it on two D750s, and they were routed into um, Atomos. Is that how you say it? I think so. Atomos think so. Ninjas. So we get pro resolution and. Oh, yeah, we just got the new Sennheiser uh, G3 lavaliers, which are awesome. Yeah, you know what's interesting about those is that I, kind of going into this, so I have my Roadlink wireless lav kits, and those are pretty good. Like 99% of the time they're solid, but mm -hmm. if there's any, if anything happens where there's not complete line of sight, things can go bad really quickly. And, um, you know, when you're doing a job like this where you're getting paid to be the professional and deliver the goods and not have to do a bunch of retakes, because these are not professional actors we were working no, with. No, no, it was interviews. They wanted right. very natural people's first response. Yeah. Yep. So we, we both invested in a uh, G Sennheiser G3 kit. So we each have one now <laughs> just to kind of test it out. And what do you think? It, it, I, I wouldn't say it sounds awesome and it doesn't sound bad. It just sounds like a voice, which I guess is awesome. Yeah. Like it just sounds yep. very natural. Really it great. It sounds lot. really natural. We didn't have any issues with dropouts as far as mm -mm. I can tell. Yeah, it's all monitoring. I think you stayed here in the hotel room and I did like a whole loop around the hotel and yep. no drops. Was just talking, yeah. Nothing. No drops. So you can get out of line of sight and they held up really well. So um, I, we were really pleased with them. I That was. Um, no regrets whatsoever. Not at all. And, and the thing is, is they're pricey, you know, like 630 bucks per channel, yeah. which is an investment. Yeah, but I, I, unless something crazy happens with, you know, frequencies you can use, those will be, yeah. be using those for 10, 15, 20 years. Yep. So that was all good. What about the, um, the Nikon D750s for cameras? Why? Why did we do that? Because we had it. <laughs> the best camera you have is one in your hand. Yeah. No. And, and because they match. We both have yeah. one. We both had Anonymous Ninja. Yeah. So now we have stuff that matches without having to hate ourselves in post. Yeah. Yeah. And that, 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 made, it, that made it easy. I'm really comfortable on the 750 because that's the only camera I have. Mm -hmm. I've worked on a few other fancier cameras. Um, but when we're, you're in the sort of documentary kind of frame of mind, you want to have like a go bag with gear you know. Which was one of the lessons we learned because we didn't know the Sennheiser very well. We did, actually. <laughs> and then we kind of freaked out. The funny thing is, it wasn't a it wasn't a gear malfunction. It was a, like an operator malfunction. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we actually ended up using one Sennheiser for the first interview, one Sennheiser mm -hmm. and one Road Link. Yeah. And that worked fine. Yeah, the Road came through too. So the Road and the Road did fine. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So the Road did its job. Sennheiser did its job. So after we got it worked out after the first interview, we did a whole series of them. Um, Sennheiser was rock solid. I think we're going to hate ourselves a little bit in post um, because, you know, we're shooting with DSLRs on mm -hmm. something that normally people that do this kind of work all the time mm -hmm. are probably using more either video, like professional video cams sure. where they're taking the mic straight into the camera and they're not doing any syncing in post and they're just delivering the goods. You know what I mean? Right. Like I can step away, give them a drive and they're done. Yeah. Um, but we're going to have to do a little bit more work. And, you know, frankly, um, we never had to worry about pushing high ISOs because that, you know, even if we didn't have a ton of light, we were still good to yeah. crank them, which on a video cam, you start to get dicey pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the great thing about the 750 is it's just like a, for me, it's just a great utilitarian camera because I love to take photos, but I'm also like, when I'm, or when I'm doing video, like I'll start taking photos of like just my own behind the scenes, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, and vice versa. So it, it's just, it takes really good video. You can get 60 frames. Um, well, uh, 30 going into the Ninja, but still it, in ProRes, something you can have in your bag with a couple of lenses. It's, I don't know, I'm, I'm a big fan. You yeah. know, and, it, and it's one of those things where when you're bidding on a bigger job, sure, I'll figure in a budget, you know, to for a, I don't know, an FS100 or a Canon C100. Is that kind of the jam that you, one of the jams you're liking? I, I kind of like that one. Yeah, or yeah. a Red Epic or whatever, whatever the job calls for. But for this, it was like, 
um, they had a certain budget and we didn't want to push it to be like, hey, can we get another two grand to rent, it, to rent a Red Dragon for the weekend or whatever. Right. Um, for, and for them, that wouldn't have mattered. It was yeah, amazing. and it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't about, it's not like a cinematic thing, it's more of an internal research type of thing yep. they're trying to do. So. so one thing that we did here that was kind of a learning thing for us, I, for, certainly for me because I've never done this before, and you ended up bearing the brunt of it, was <laughs> part of it was a walking interview, kind of a tour mm-hmm. walking interview. And so, and they only, you know, because you're doing a documentary, one of the kind of really important things is you don't, you have to kind of maintain that you have to be as non-intrusive as possible. Yeah, you don't want to impose on someone that you're interviewing that's not used to being on camera, that's not used to, you know, being kind of put under the microscope. So you have to be, you have have to just not exist as much as you can. Right. And that was kind of what we were trying to do. And so we put the audio bag on you. So you had the sound devices in our little Orca bag on the Orca vest. By the way, how was that? That thing is awesome. The vest, that that (laughs) interface, or uh, recorder, I think interface, because I think of the recording studio, but um, that it's, and just the headphones, it was just. Just, and it it like, it keeps it close to your body. So you don't feel like you're, you know, like totally, yeah, it just works. Yeah, and the hip support, like it puts the weight where it should, which um, it stuck out a little bit, which made, uh, you know, the Steadicam a little bit hard and I wasn't, and it also made it like, I I think we would have had to choose if we had a Steadicam vest, we would have had to either had, we would have had to break something weird. One or the other. Um, So we just had the the actual Steadicam by itself, no no vest, which walking around for 45 minutes gets a little brutal, but it wasn't too bad. You know what I think we could have also done there too? Like if you did have a Steadicam vest and you were operating camera, mm-hmm. um, because the Sennheisers do pretty well even outside of line of sight, mm-hmm. I probably could have been hanging back 40, yeah. 20 or 40 feet. You could have been out in the car uh, on the front porch. Or- <laughs> operating the sound. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then you doing the Steadicam. So that's a lesson learned too, I suppose. Yeah. Because I knew, you know, the, the, the producers were very concerned about, okay, we really have to not make it f- these people feel like they're being filmed, you know, as much yeah. as possible, which, you know, anyway. That's yeah. Cool. So what about ergonomically? So you're operating a, a manual, like a physics-based gr- uh, yeah, gimbal gravity. with an audio bag. Yeah, the, the only hard part was I had to hold it out a little bit further out front than I, I probably would have it a little closer to my body normally. Yep. So that was a little bit of shoulder strain, but I stretched out before, I stretched out after. Yeah, pulled like, through it. You yeah. pulled through it. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even that sore. So, yeah. All right. Uh, what other lessons did we learn? Oh, so what gear did we bring that we didn't end up using? Because we had to fly here. So that's when you're traveling for filming like that, you have to be like, you know, make some tough decisions. And one of the tough decisions we made before, like when we were in the pre-production meeting, they said, you know, we really just want to use, we don't want boom mics, we want lavaliers because we don't mm-hmm. want it to be so imposing, which, you know, fair enough, okay, so we did yeah. that. We made the call, you know, my thinking was, let's bring a boom mic just in case, because they may change their minds if we're running into all sorts of problems with the lavs. Um, and then we made the call, no, we're not doing yeah. that. Because that, that's they're, a they're, boom pole that we don't have to bring. That's a windshield yep. we don't have to bring. That's mics we don't have to bring. And they were, cables. And they were very specific. They knew what a boom mic was, and they knew they didn't want it. So, like, rather than be the, the tech that knows better, like we know, we're gonna, we're gonna want one. It was just like, okay, they really don't want one. So let's let's up our game in the in the law department, and and that paid off. I paid thought, off. I thought yeah. it, was, it was smart. It was a good call. Yeah, I, and I'll confess too. And I think we had this conversation before. Is I. Lav mics, I don't love lav mics. I, I'm not gonna say I hate them, but they have their utility, but I, I usually don't like the sound of them. Usually they just, they sound like lav mics. They sound like they're taped to somebody's body. Yeah. And it's not usually a great sound. Um, but these Sennheiser, the mics that come with, it, the ME2s that come with the Sennheiser kits actually sound yeah. surprisingly just good. sounds like a voice. That's what we're using right now. That's what we're using right now. Yeah. So. Got them on. Um, so anyway, so that was one thing. We, what are things, some things we brought that we probably didn't need? Um, I think you brought your motorized. The Zhiyu and Crane gimbal. Yeah. yeah. We didn't need that. Yeah. Which is a good piece of gear, but. It's fine. Yeah. Just probably couldn't hold. It wouldn't have held the weight right of the Ninja. Yeah. Right? yeah. No, it'll, it'll fly the cam, the 750, but that's like the max limit on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't need that. I threw a monopod in the in the main case, just because I was like, this doesn't take up space, maybe we'll use it. The thing I like about monopods too is you can you know, hold them up, get a clean shot, and then if you like want to hold it from there, like at the bottom of your camera, it kind of works as sort of a pseudo steady. Yeah. Um, and that's just a very DIY, like if you're in a situation and need something better than just holding a camera and, yeah. Yeah. and shaking it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but you, you also, one thing that was kind of cool is that you found, <laughs> even just secondhand, um, a little, uh, not a little, but a pretty big case. It's like, it's like a golf bag case, like yeah. a hard case. Yeah, so it's an SKB like hard flight case to put your golf clubs in. And it was at the thrift store next to my studio in Boise. And I was, I was walking through getting some, just some odds and ends for some music video we were shooting. And I look over and I see that, and it was 30 bucks. And you know those cases are like, uh, SKB that size is probably what, 300, 400 guess. bucks, something like think, that. Yeah. And I bought it before we even had this gig, before I knew I was going to be flying with gears, like, I'm going to use that for something. So yeah. I just bought it. And it's been awesome. That, yeah, that was like a really, that was a really fortunate. Except for the broken wheel. Yeah, the wheel, <laughs> wheel came off somewhere along the way and I had to kind of drag it more than, or carry it. But the concept works really well. Yeah. You know? And there are, obviously, there are other cases. I was actually at Picture Line in Salt Lake before we left when I bought the Sennheiser kit. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, um, they had some light stand cases and they're, they're probably in the same price range. Some of them look pretty solid. Some of them are like Pelican cases and others are like, uh, they're kind of a cloth sided thing, which I don't think would hold up as well if yeah. you can actually check them on an airplane or something like that. But yeah, those get hooked around pretty good. Yeah. So they, everything held up okay on the airplanes. Yeah. Got them through. Okay. Yeah. And they didn't, they did they charge you anything extra to carry on that golf bag thing. No, it, they just charged me. It had, it was, I got under 50 pounds and so they, um, I almost didn't get under 50 pounds because of the the ballast weights for the oh right for the um, for the um, jib the jib which is a piece of gear I'm glad we brought though because that was awesome jib so yeah describe how we use that so we had um, two people being interviewed at the same time and they were sitting at the corner of a table and so we had one sort of wide angle and then we would have the jib and we would kind so of one, one camera was our wide shot yeah and then and then as they were talking you or I, whoever was running it, would just try, try and kind of anticipate who was going to talk first, and then we could have a closer up. We uh, yeah. popped, uh, yeah. so we had a 50 on one 750, mm -hmm. 50 millimeter lens, and then on the other one, we had the 85, so we could get back a little bit more and get a more tight shot of them. Yep. yep. And so we'll be able to cut that together pretty nicely. It'll yeah. Be, it'll make some nice, nice interview pieces. Yeah. I'm really, that, yeah, the, the jib, I'm really glad that we brought that. That would be, yep. a, that'd be a good piece of gear to review, actually. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, thought it was useful. Yeah, and it was it's not that expensive, right? That's that's what's so amazing about that. And that's like certain certain gear that I'm I've found and I, I don't know how durable it's going to be. I've had it for less than a year, but um I think that steady cam that I that I brought. Um but it was like less than 300 bucks. And who, who makes it? Verizoom? Very uh Verizoom, yeah. And I think they're actually out of here, out of Texas here. Oh, okay. But that uh that thing is awesome. You can add weights to it. We have yeah, the it was, it was 750, smooth. the Ninja, and we, once you get it balanced, you just float it over. Yeah, it's silky. Pull your focus and, and you use go. that mainly for real estate video. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna use that for real estate video. I use that a lot of music videos as music well. Music videos. Yeah. Um, if, especially if there's a lot of shooting, I don't want to like steady cam all day long. It's it kind of serves a similar purpose. Yeah. And the reason to use something yeah. like that as opposed to just a fluid head when you're doing an interview is I noticed a lot of times the two interviewees were different, like significantly different heights. Mm -hmm. And so being able to reframe was pretty nice. So, yeah. you could, so you're not just turning right or left, you're also going up or down to yeah. reframe it. So that worked nicely. Yeah, so cool. Really smooth. All right, let's do some more of these. Okay. All right, thanks everybody. We'll talk to you again next week.